Chat, here we go. We got another semifinal. It's apparently Jack versus Moxie. Apparently Jack with one of the more legendary runs through the North American tournament in order to finish first. A reverse sweep over Daniel. Somebody who has lost pretty much just to Jack now, it seems like. And a finish over first killer and a very close one. Able to beat him in seven. Now he has Moxie. He is back in EU, but representing the North American region as their champion. And Moxie from France coming in second in the EU slash Middle East tournament, which what should that be called? What's the good name for that chat? Because everyone always asks me, wait, is Middle East going to get to play? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just mean EU servers. So maybe that's the answer. EU servers tournament. Losing to his rival on my stream, Rawas. But Moxie had, up until that point, looked like one of the best players in 1v1. He also had a tough loss against Toxic. He has, seems to have a really bad matchup against Toxic. Because, other than that, Moxie has looked really hard to play against. Swirl's in charge, thank you for the 53 months. You say adge, but you're not getting ads if you subscribe. E-M-E-A, that seems hard to say. Moxie, a third. Jack has played one 1v1 in recent memory. I think everybody will have seen uh, most of these 1v1s in consecutive order on YouTube and everything. So I'm gonna talk about Johnny's 1v1 tournament that's been going on at the same time. I feel like we've been talking about that a lot, just so you know. Uh, the first couple games of Johnny's Pro Drops tournament has been played while these guys are all in EU. So Jack did play against Rawas. And Jack not able to get the win against Rawas. Rawas looking like, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Everyone's looking so good. I, I, I don't wanna keep saying everyone's looking amazing, but the reality is there's so many different players at the top right now. All of them, you know, with performances that make you think that's the, that's the best player I've ever seen. You know, that's the best player in the world right now. And then they play the next person and they lose to him. And now I'm like, man, I, I'm just, I'm lost. I'm lost out here. But anyways, Jack, he's trying to make his argument. I mentioned before the start of this tournament that I think Jack and Rawas coming into this week before any games have been played had the best chance at walking out undisputed best in the world. If there would have been both pro drops and the fall 5k. And doing so has apparently cursed them both as Rawas in his first game wasn't able to win against Daniel and then Jack uh, in his first game wasn't able to win against Rawas. So right away they immediately took losses and made it confusing for us. Now will Jack be able to win this tournament? It'd be a good way to brush off what was not the best performance from him yesterday. And it doesn't seem like a great start for him. Moxie up 6-0. Jack has one of his first opportunities here as Moxie backs off and immediately closes the distance and decides to never give Jack an opportunity. Wide swing from Moxie, considering how aggressive he's been. Man, read that play easily from Jack. Jack doesn't seem to be in the zone here. Not in the first few minutes since he's down 6-0, but not now. He has... One of the stronger mentals in terms of a long series from anybody I've seen. And I feel a little bit vindicated saying that after watching him go down 3-0 to Daniel. Daniel looking like he could never lose and then Jack winning four straight. So Jack going for a pinch here. Trying to shoot the moon a little bit in his attempt to come back in this game. And don't blame him for that when things haven't been working. You might need something special if you want to come back, but Moxie, his flick sent away. Rawas, Rawas, that was the previous game. Jack, gonna counterattack. I, I watch one person get a save for one second, and I just say Rawas. <laughs> you know, a flick, a flick is saved. Ah, that was Rawas. <laughs> no, it's Jack. Rawas isn't in the game anymore. Apparently Jack gets the save. Moxie, direct kickoff win. Oh no, he didn't score off of it. Absolutely should have. Jack recognizing that he can just go steal the other corner boost that Moxie had missed. And now, 
A ceiling reset. Look at the shot from Jack. The speed. Moxie says nice one. Because he is not able to establish himself in net in time to make a reasonable save on this. Has to recover late. I mean, he just... It was too fast. He was either going to have to try and make a save on no boost, which is not going to happen against that shot, or he's going to go to the corner, grab 100, and by the time he makes it back to net, it's too late. So really, just execution that could not be stopped there from Jack. Now a save and a counterattack. Never, I can't believe that that registered as a shot. Didn't even seem like it was on target, let alone it had no chance of going in. Moxie was definitely going to keep it out, even if it was. Jack a bit too strong of a touch here. If he had touched that slightly softer, he'd have been able to catch back up to it and get a third goal off of it. Moxie with a minute left to go. Going to slow the pace down a little bit, take the ball on top of his car, and he knows Jack has no choice but to put on an early challenge. He can't afford to shadow for the next 30 seconds as Moxie slowly dribbles the ball to net. So Moxie expecting the challenge, flicks over the top of it and extends the lead even more, 7-2. Jack, I think right now he's going for the pogo. I love to see it. I mean, Jack is playing the mental game with a long series right now. It is a seven game series. This game won. It's not the end of the world. And Jack, instead of trying to force it, maybe getting even more and more frustrated, trying to hit a pogo, trying to relax. I think in a long series, this is not a bad play. I also think we're going to start seeing more of these 360 wave dash uh, power slides. Somebody's going to start using those to great effect. I feel like Dark does them a lot. We just saw Jack. If you saw from his perspective, he did one. You know, it feels slightly accidental by everybody who's doing them right now, but at least the 180 as turnarounds, there will come a day where people will hit those wave dashes that turn you around so quick. It's just the problem is they're on the razor edge of missing the wave dash completely and flipping all the way through, which absolutely kills your recovery. You go from speedy recovery to worst possible recovery, so I don't think... That's why you see any players really risking it at all. But if there's anything I've learned, it's that risky plays with time don't become quite as risky as players seem to get better and better. Game number one, definitely Moxie's, no doubt about it. 6-0 early lead. Since then, 2-2 between the two of them, but still, Moxie up 1-0. YouTube, your support has been insane. We have made it to $11,000 towards the prize pool. Remember, subscribe and you can push it to the max of 15,000. Game number two. Jack could afford to turn it around early here. While we were introducing the match and the context for both these players and this game, this semifinal in the fall 5K, we spent most time talking about two players while Moxie finished up a five or so goal lead by the time we were focused more in on the game. Jack gonna have to change what happened to him there early. This bump is not gonna do it. Moxie's gonna go up 1-0. It's just like the donkey dash. Once one player does it consistently, all will start to try it. I hate that Jack has just about fully converted it to the donkey dash. <laughs> <laughs> he has too much power. He has too much power if he's able to convert it fully to the Donkey Dash. Moxie, look at this flick. This is his classic flick. Turn right, flick left, top left. He loves to aim top left. We'll see it as the series goes on. I can feel pretty confident saying that. I've mentioned it a million times before. It's never changed. He's still prefers to turn right, flip left, and aim for the top left corner. To the point where defenders who see him carrying, I think can just borderline assume he's gonna go there. The only issue with that is if you start jumping too early, he's probably just gonna roll it underneath you, but definitely shouldn't be expecting the flick to any other corner. Jack's just gonna let this roll in. Does it have orange trail? <laughs> Wait, did he psycho? Wait. Oh, there's like a mini psycho. <laughs> he, he psychoed with with the ball like right against the back wall. 
So it was just a really short distance psycho. Wait, you understand why you call it Donkey Dash? It isn't random. It's a mechanic called the Horse Dash, which works similarly, so the Donkey version is kind of smaller. Oh, is that really why he did it? I thought he just tried to pick the silliest name he could think of. <laughs> that, that was the lore that I heard. Jack cannot work through Moxie on the goal line, at least not yet. As a on boost, reset needed to be gained in order to turn Jack's momentum back towards net in time, but still didn't get a shot from it. Moxie is going to prioritize getting it around Jack. Look at this angle. Can he get back to it? He cannot. Wow. That was going to be a nasty shot from Moxie. It should have been impossible to score. If you move it around Jack that much, it should have been at the cost of being able to score, and I guess ultimately it was at the cost of being able to score. But Moxie sure almost made it possible. Jack saving that one off the back wall strong in order to set up his take the other way. He's taking his whole dribble from the wrong side of the ball, and he's not able to make it work out. Jack now patient as he tries to wait for a Moxie mistake in net, one that so far Moxie hasn't given him. Jack going to try and dribble all the way from the back wall. Oh, it's in! Oh my god, I thought Moxie was going to have it. Because I figured Moxie had enough time to get back to this one. He's got a ton of boost. He swings just a bit too wide. I think if he realized he needed to cut in earlier, he could have made that save. But what a crazy shot. Jack has scored a couple different dribbles that way. Where he's just rushing them as fast as possible. Thinking, as long as I get it to the net early, even if I make the final touch decently far away from that, it's going to work out. And what I mean by that is you normally see players wait to outplay right around the box in order to get a defender to jump and then move it around them. Jack is taking these shots early from really far out. Normally a mistake because it's very easy to read on defense, but if you're just faster, then it doesn't matter. If you just get it there so fast that there is no read to be made, then it can work out. And Jack has done that a couple times. Moxie, a demo, and then a change up of pace just enough to get Jack to stop moving. He reacts to it quick, and then you see him kind of. I mean, I think the slow mo makes it look even worse, but he's trying to, you know, slow down and speed up just the right amount, which gets you kind of stuck in net. Moxie able to get a 3 2 lead. He's going to try and long shot this probably. I don't think he's going to score off of it, but he's at least going to clear the ball out of the orange half while he picks up some boosts. He's intercepted Jack's touch in the corner and cannot steal the back corner. So it's forced all the way to the midfield. Jack, another fast dribble. Prioritizing speed over all else and it's working right now. This is not the way I normally see Jack score in his 1v1s. I mean, he has been playing like this more often than late. Honestly, it's, I feel like it's been ever since he was in North America. He started playing a bit more like this in his 1v1 games, but... He is not normally one to score exclusively full field dribbles for every goal in the game so far, which I think has pretty much been the case here. And that's been so much lower scoring than the previous match we just watched. Nice pinch by Moxie. The demo might not have been scorable if it weren't for the nice ground pinch. Jack able to control this kickoff. Doesn't like the setup for the air dribble this time around. Takes it to the ground and wave dashing like a madman might have resulted in him not being able to get a quick touch towards net that could have resulted in either a goal or maybe an extended possession. Instead, he gets himself demoed the long shot. <laughs> Jack is striking exclu exclusively full field. Whether it's a full field dribble or a long shot from full field. Every scoring play that has worked is going to start all the way from the back wall. And that was a pogo attempt. If you ask me, that was Jack trying to see if he could get a nice pogo bounce. Boxy got a great setup off the back wall for it to drop directly down in front of the net. But Jack was there to stop it. 
Been a very interesting game here in this game number two. Jack has been playing a bit unorthodox, I would argue, and it's been working out for him. Another full field dribble. This one, I want to see what Moxie was doing. Maybe I'm just gotten used to Rawas, who would never let... Okay, this is actually a good late adjustment, but I mean, Jack just gets a ton of extra speed. But we just watched Rawas, who didn't let any of these go in, which actually is just a great example of how good Rawas is. The fact that I'm starting to just expect all these really solid dribbles to just be saved by default is probably just credit to having watched Rawas a couple minutes ago. Did Moxie get the bump there to push Jack even farther out? Moxie able to tie it up. 13 seconds, crucial kickoff here. Jack trying to win this into the corner, win the race. It was right in the perfect spot where it wasn't clear which one of them was going to get back to the ball first. And I think Jack wants us to hit the ground. Yeah, he's just going to tap it to the ground. That was not a good position for him to try and extend that play any longer. So overtime in game number two. Jack can tie the series with a goal in this overtime. Otherwise, Moxie going to get two straight. Nice low 50. Jack cannot demo him. The demo would have been the secure in the game. Now instead, it's Moxie the other way. Flicks very early. And he got Jack to make a mistake. Yeah, Jack, you can see... Flipping his way out of net, not even going to pretend like he's coming back because he knows that he had already messed up passing the ball into the midfield, using his last bit of boost to do so. Definitely not what you want to do. Moxie up 2-0. Moxie trying to earn his rematch against Ruas. And he started as well as you can. Game number three. Gen G Mobile One Racing Apparently Jack takes on Moxie. Genji Mobile One Racing, apparently Jack has looked better the previous game than he did in the first. A lot of that has come from his aerial game, but his aerial game will start weak here in game number three. Maybe because he started too close to the net. Only seems to be getting good takes when he goes the entirety of the field. Wave dash kickoff from Moxie might be one of the best, if not the best wave dash kickoff. He has been known for his kickoffs and prefers the wave dash as his main kickoff. Jack, another full field dribble, the musty 50. Oh, did he go in? I thought he just got a musty 50 and was going to be able to force it through. Jack does still have the boost advantage on Moxie, but an awkward position to try and keep possession of Moxie. He is going for another crazy angle. Almost tapped it directly into net. Moxie. Walter dribble from the corner. Jack now with a ton of boost. You just see Moxie waiting until he can use his flip. It, he kind of telegraphed what he's going to do, but he couldn't use it early. So he just waits until he's just high enough. And then it's not going to matter if you're Jack. I think that's what... Both of them knew. Jack throws a nice shot. Like You're going to have to make some sort of execution error if I'm going to have a chance of saving this. And Moxie did not. Jack using his reset. Moxie loves these pinches. They've been working so well. Oh my goodness. I can't believe how solid he's got these. Like They become so consistent. I expected it to work. I was wanting to see it from Jack's perspective, but he didn't watch with ball cam. <laughs> so he was just basically just saying, if you make it, you make it. I'm not even going to look at it. <laughs> but he has gotten so good at them. The number of times that somebody has gone for a pinch and I've thought, yeah, they're going to hit it. This is going to be a goal. Especially from that distance is, is basically never. I don't think anybody up until this point had gained that confidence from me where I expected them to score it over not. But Moxie has gotten there. He's gotten so good at them that I was going to be surprised if he didn't shoot that on net, which he did. 4-0. This is exactly what we saw. Not exactly, I shouldn't say that, because Rawas probably had even more control of the series than Moxie does. But Moxie is having similar control against his North American matchup.
Moxie is going to go. There's no reason to go for another pinch. Yeah, he's not going to. It's going to be a wall to air dribble. Use the ceiling reset. And what is this shot? He got the movement he needed to make Jack miss, but he pushed it out of net. There's Jack's signature donkey dash. Jack's going to try and hit him back the other way. Feels like we've almost switched to a freestyle 1v1 here as these two attack on full field dribbles. Moxie letting the fake go through, though. I mean, Jack, he, he never used his flip. He was nowhere close. Look at that dash. I don't think we've seen anybody score yet from the zap dash, the donkey dash, the quick landing wave dash, whatever you want to call it. Except for Zapatos. I want to say he's the only one I've seen earn a goal almost exclusively because of the dash, but that was probably the closest chance there for Jack if he used that to catch back up and get the quick shot. Moxie's going to take this to the air off the bounce. Clean reset. Jack covers every option and should be able to counter here. Just a quick pass to himself and actually I think he missed. Yeah. Off the post and out. Moxie, decent recovery to make Jack feel a bit pressured. But I do think that with Jack's perfect execution, there's nothing Moxie could have done about the counterattack. Jack, ceiling reset and the nice 360 spin before tapping it over the top of Moxie. Jack has exclusively been trying to score with freestyle type shots. And it hasn't been a terrible way to score. Especially considering, you know, how the game started for him when he wasn't necessarily playing that way. Had to go down six goals. Ever since he's changed up his strategy, it has looked better for him. He's going to have to get some ground play, some midfield play to go his way if he wants to win the game. Great movement this time. Moxie's just starting to expect the best result for Jack in terms of what he wants from the dribble. You know, tons of movement on the reset. It is going to get you scored on when Jack either fakes or misses. What a flick. Moxie, the save, the counter, the flick himself. He's looking top left always. Turning right, flicking left. Jack was ready for it. Did he miss this one? No. No, he did not. Moxie needed to get a bit more height, I think, on his flick if he wanted to prevent this counterattack. Jack, a kickout possession in his favor. He has to take it back to his corner. He's got Moxie chasing him down, but I still think this is to his advantage. And now he's going to get some space. Bounce dribble for him. Moxie is all over that. The one time that Jack doesn't just take to the side wall and go up for a dribble, tries to go infield, and Moxie's there. And I feel like that's what we've seen a ton in this series. But Moxie, his pressure, it's enough. It's a goal. It's a guaranteed win probably for him in this game. It should have been a jack tie. He tried to get the read. It was a tough read coming off this post. He tried to read it, went way too high, and then missing it meant a free goal for Moxie. 5-3. The way that Moxie has looked, it's hard to bank on Jack getting these two goals in the final seconds. So it'll be a 3-0 lead for Moxie. Rawas, oh wait, maybe not. Wait a second. <laughs> wait just a second. I take it all back. This was a surprising amount of speed off the wave dash and shot. I mean, Je Moxie was there. He could have single jumped or done something and, and slowed it down, but it was just quicker than he expected. Now he's going to kick off win for Jack, and this is actually good enough. He can make a play out of this. Moxie is going to dive, and that's actually a really smart play. The ball slightly rolled towards Jack's half, so he wasn't going to be able to get a clean setup. And there was going to be a moment for Moxie to stop him, so he decided, even though he didn't have the boost, to go in and get that one touch. It was all he needed to guarantee the game win. So 5-4-3-0 for Moxie over Jack. Game number four. Jack maybe has Moxie right where he wants him. We saw Jack come back from a similar first three games to Daniel. Daniel looked like it was just a matter of time before the series ended in his favor, and it's got to feel that way right now for Moxie. Can Jack find the answer?
tell you what, missing shots just barely off the post like that is not going to be the answer. Going to need some bounces to go slightly your way. If you want to take down this French master. Moxie popping the ball over the challenge that he felt was coming and then setting this up to where Jack has almost no choice but to own goal. Moxie knows if he gets it out in front of net, the right spot that the only type of touch Jack can make as he swings back is one that will likely just throw it directly into the net, which it did. Nice 50. Single jump to Wave Dash for Jack, who notices that Moxie's challenge is going to be very poor. Coming backwards, Moxie tried to backflip probably a bit too early, but really he just didn't stand a chance when Jack getting to square up facing directly at the ball. Moxie sees Jack coming in right away, but it's not enough. He tried to turn in low 50, but Jack still took it away and was able to dunk him to follow it up. Follow it up with a demo, I should say. Has a 2-1 lead. I haven't seen a ton of leads for Jack in the series so far. Boost steal and space for him. Probably lost a bit of his footing there with that dash. Don't know if he gained him any advantage either. He's going to pass to himself off the ceiling on the wall to air dribble and try to just keep it high and keep it away from Moxie. It did not work out. So he was forced down to the ground where Moxie can make the save. Moxie chasing him down. Jack Evades it with ease. Didn't quite evade the corner bump though with ease. He just barely got away with that one. And now he's going to take Moxie off the map. Out to the midfield to get 100. And what are we going to see? It seems like we've seen full field dribbles from Jack every time he's had the chance. Moxie's going to respawn and immediately tackle him though. He does not want to let him get away with those. And why not when Jack has been kind of telegraphing the kind of offense he wants to go to when he has space. Smart by Moxie to take that away. Moxie with control of the ball into the corner and he just escapes, escapes faster than Jack is expecting, who tries to close the distance and shadow with him on the near wall or near to him on the wall, which is hard to do. Players always able to get a surprising amount of speed from those positions. Moxie likely going to find a way to score. Oh my goodness, Jack. Such an interesting save. 180 into the first save and then having to somehow squeeze that ball in an angle that wasn't headed to net. Now can he force this one through? Now oh, gets the unfortunate bounce on the crossbar and Moxie the demo, the counter, and a fourth. Four two for Moxie. We saw an early lead for Jack, a small one at that. But Moxie three straight to erase it. Gonna try and keep Jack at bay the rest of this match. Two more minutes he needs to hold on. He's so far shown that he has no problem doing so. Nice tackle. In a moment where Jack was about to start a dribble. Boost advantage. Moxie sees the best opportunity for him is immediately to buy himself a bit of time. This full field dribble from Jack is lacking the speed it needs to surprise Moxie. I mean, we saw the same kind of dribbles from him earlier in the series, but he was doing them as counterattacks and with much faster pace. Even though he was shooting them far from the net, they still worked out. That was an example of why you don't actually don't see players doing it very often and why normally shooting from that far away is actually a big mistake. It makes it easier for the defender to react to. And if you aren't just beating them to the net, they're probably going to save it and counter it. Thank you, Inogod, for the tier one for 14 months. 14 months of tier one. Thank you. Moxie pogoing randomly. Jack 
Able to get a third as he punishes Moxie's random pogo. Moxie actually might have been fine if he had just pogoed and then stayed aggressive and turned towards the ball. I watched AJ practice some pogos last night on his stream. So maybe we'll get to see some AJ pogos. He was seeming to think that the key is actually boosting down into the ground, that you have to boost harder to get the kind of bounce that you need. Which I do see Dark boost frequently. This is a great shot from Jack. Low air dribble. Gets the reset and actually really more just that it pushes him down to the ground quicker. He's able to pop the ball over Moxie who has not had that Rawas level goal line defense. He's been able to save the imperfect shots from Jack, but most of the good chances actually have made it through. Moxie, quick recovery off the kickoff, gets around the ball and extends his lead back to two. Wave dash kickoff here, Jack gets aggressive and so Moxie gets a goal. Jack got a slight win towards the orange half and Try to go all in on it. Jack wins this kickoff though. Moxie does not want to let him have a wall to air dribble. So now the wall to air dribble should be a bit easier as he attacks with a recovering Moxie. And this is a great reset to Musty, but one of the reasons why it goes in is because he has the zero boost Moxie retreating trying to get there because it actually did drop down. I think without Moxie's help, it does hit ground before going in. So it all comes down to the fact that Moxie missed that early challenge. 30 seconds left to go. Moxie is going to play a bit of time wasting. He knows he can hold onto the ball and win the series and earn his rematch with Rawas. I mean, Rawas, Moxie, how many times have we seen it? Jack, maybe if that psycho went in that he just attempted. Might have been able to get another goal quickly, although Moxie is actually just trying to throw the game. <laughs> what is going on from him? He had such safe play where he was like not even bringing the ball to Jack. And then all of a sudden he's panic flipping on the back wall without possess- like, What is going on? <laughs> what is he doing there? Why did he- He just absolutely swapped back and forth from really smart, I'm going to secure the game gameplay, to I'm going to hand over a free goal. Jack needs to keep this up. What a comeback this entire series would be if Jack somehow kept it up and somehow brought it back. But no, it's going to be a sweep for Rawas and Moxie as they meet once again on my stream. These two always seem to find a way. How many grand finals have been Rawas Moxie now? But the cross region grand final will be a rematch between a game that we have seen many, many times.